Friends with Dr. Nick here tonight. I've got a tennis match with three friends and I'll be on the winning side. Once we've won, I want to celebrate in a big way. I want to show off the scoreline uh, with a great looking image. Uh, and I'm gonna, it's going to go into our, our uh, it'll go into our uh, Telegram chat group. So I've made a Telegram bot. I'm going to, I get to type in the scores, uh, who played uh, and uh, what the scoreline was. And it prints out this awesome scorecard. So I, um, uh, we've got a couple of tests and uh, obviously a little bot, uh, Charlie's my son. And he thought this was very funny. Uh, my bot obviously doesn't care about valid scores uh, and it happily printed it out. And then, uh, yeah, so I can type anything I want. It's a plain English. There's an AI that will uh, interpret the text, figure out a structured score line, um, it should be even clever enough to figure out who the winner was and loser was, despite other text, um, and then render an awesome looking image. And, uh, and of course, this is for tennis. You could do it for anything you want. Uh, if this is interesting to you, stay around. This is going to be a fun video uh, for you to recreate for your uh, local sport club. Let's do it. The, uh, the, what we'll end up making is going to look a little bit like this. I'm going to walk through it and then we'll go and build it from scratch. Uh, not gonna leave anything out. So it comes in here where we have uh, the uh, Telegram bot now. Our, our, our social group uses Telegram. Um, pick, a, pick any of the chat platforms as long as they've got a way for an inmate to uh, receive the text, then uh, you should be good to be able to uh, produce the image and post it back. So uh, here we are receiving the, uh, the score. Basically, it looks out for um, for all text messages, I ignore anything that doesn't have uh, the sort of scoring language in it, just as a quick filter. Uh, I then send it off to AI to extract the score. It's still not going to have an actual score, so if it doesn't, then we just ignore it. Uh, we extract out some structured text. So what we're going to ask the AI is to convert the, the natural language, um, as I sort of demonstrated here, this sort of natural language, into some structured text, some JSON objects. Um, there's lots in the world of computers, lots of different structured text formats. JSON is just very nicely used throughout make.com. So we're going to extract that out um, because what comes out of the LM, the, uh, the ALI might not just be JSON. It might have some other things. So we'll just pull out the JSON part, we'll convert it into uh, an internal structure, uh, and then we'll generate a scorecard and then post it back. And just to watch this live, um, working. Uh, Beats YouTube six love. How long does this take to work? It'd be awesome if this is actually working while I'm recording. That's so embarrassing. No, how computers work. There we go. Apparently, the lag is unpredictable. Um, useful to note that uh, just because you've uh, wired things up, the, 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 the queuing system of, of Make, uh, how long it holds on. I mean, we don't necessarily have control of how long it takes the Telegram, the server, to send it to Make. And we don't have control of how long Make will hold it in its queue before it gives it to our scenario. But nonetheless, eventually it ran. Um, we almost lost faith in, in humanity. And here we have our image produced for us. That's going to be awesome. This is what we're going to build. So a couple of ideas. One, we will start with uh, a blank scenario, as we always do. Um, but I will start with perhaps the harder part and then build backwards from there. And perhaps the harder part is making the image. How do we make an image programmatically? And of course, this is awesome. If you can get this idea in your head of how to programmatically make an image with structured text, uh, you could use it for um, all sorts of work-related things. I know this is ridiculous, the scorecard, but uh, you know, a uh, new sale, a new lead, you could produce an image and put it into Slack uh, or your, your Teams group. Um, 
you want to make pictures which uh, have got your head and a prospect's head and put that at the top of your uh, your, your uh, cold email, you can give that a try. There's a lot you can do if you can programmatically make uh, pictures. So uh, the platform we're going to use on this occasion uh, is API template.io. Uh, that's one of the ones I've been using. Uh, another one I've been using is render form. Um, uh, so uh, I'll do render form in a future video, but today we'll use uh, API template. So we're going to use API template and uh, we'll set that up in a minute. API template will take a base image, overlay the uh, input text or the, any input values coming in from make, use the image and give it back to us. Then we'll send that, make will send that off to Telegram. We just, uh, we probably perhaps could do everything inside API template, but let's, let's go where people go to find nice looking things. Let's go to, uh, uh, to Canva. Let's see if we can find something interesting. So see, here is the one that I've been using for my local group. Uh, and here is one I prepared prior to just making sure that the world still worked the way I thought it did before I started the video. But there are a bunch of, of reasonable looking ones. What, what I do want is I want one that's got enough space to put the people's names. The reason I ended up picking this one is is because um, there was just sort of enough space where I could put the two team pe people in, in the team's names. Um, this one, maybe there might be enough space. Uh, this one, kind of cool in that it's got uh, the flags. People in my social group are from different nationalities. It would be fun as an extension to uh, to map their flag. Um, so yeah, a bunch of cool pictures in here. This one's good. Lots of lots of space here for for people's names. Um, and uh, let's have a look at it. I mean, it's not terrible. Uh, yeah, look, let's keep things safe. Um, I will go with the one that I've, I've used myself. Um, so we customize this. Now we're going to use Canva just to lay out the basic base image. And then we will take that, we'll download it and then give it across to um, API template. Uh, we'll go um, uh, YouTube. Tennis bot, and uh, if we can get some emoji action going on, that's sort of subliminal, you know, like and subscribe type situation. Uh, I don't want to be blunt about it, you know, you'll like and subscribe at your own leisure. Okay, um, and uh, we could say, you know, Dr. Nick, youtube.com, Dr. Nick, uh, if we want it. Um, and uh, so there we go. Now, this other text is the text that's now going to be in the way. We want to get rid of this. Um, and we will put this text in uh, within API template. Or whichever of the rendering, you know, there, are, there are many, probably many different ways to take, uh, to overlay text and produce the final one. Um, so it would save that if we wanted to. Go YouTube tennis bot background and share this is perhaps overstating what we're doing we're just downloading it bloody work uh what happened click the wrong button there it is no that's the one i did before i started the video this is the one. Oh, so close. Oh, it's got stuck between screens. There we go. That's the one I made for you. I'll be it looks very similar. Okay, so this is our base image. Uh, we're now going to use API template to overlay. We don't need Canva anymore, and we do need this. So let's click on. So I've I've logged in API template. Uh, you get a, like fifty free image renderings, um, and. Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm sure if that's per. I, I, I've forgotten that the pricing wasn't as awesome. Oh, okay, so once a month you get fifty, which is possibly fine for certainly for this. If if I just used it for um uh, for producing these these uh, scorecards, that's plenty. Um, 
when I started to have other projects that I wanted to render images, I did start looking for other ideas of, of where I could uh, get that cost per image down. So here we are over here. Um, we'll do uh, YouTube tennis bot. Um, select a tennis. I think ours was like an Instagram style. Yep. We don't really care. We're just going to start with something and then get rid of everything. Edit. Okay, so now we've got some sort of, you know, if you wanted to edit this, but you can see the gist of the idea is that each of these uh, chunks of text um, represented over here as uh, labels and, and, and names. And these are the labels that we'll be using in our automation and make.com to pass values through uh, to API template and render this image. But, um, in fact, you know, we, we could take this one and try to make it work. Then we'll add ours and go from there. What have we got? Um, API console. Dun, 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 dun. Look at that. Clicking on Zapier, make.com, N8, 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 N8. Oh, I'm really sorry for not knowing how I'm supposed to pronounce that. Um, here are all the properties that we could override on this particular one. It, but by the time we finish our scorecard, it will be different uh, because we um, only need to override a couple of them. But look at this, this is fantastic. I really appreciate, I applaud. I applaud them when they make it this easy. Um, okay, so we've got, um, let's just wire this up. So over here, it says that there is an API template. There it is there. Module, set of modules. Um, and create image, create PDF, create PDF from a URL, PDF, blah, 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 blah. Lots and lots of different things. Let's click on create image. Um, I've already wired up my connection. I'm sure that was pretty obvious. Uh, payload pairs. Um, I probably will do payload pairs when we do ours, or maybe I'll just pass the JSON straight through. Um, we'll see. There's pros and cons. The downside of passing the JSON straight through is what exactly will the AI produce for us. But uh, for the moment, we'll just do key pairs, which should. Uh, so now we'll pick our uh, the YouTube one. Um, sample. PNG, but please do not enter the extension. Fine. Um, and I'm not sure why. Whatever. Um, Okay, so now we're going to pass through some values. Now, of course, these values will come from somewhere earlier on in our uh, scenario, but for, for now we'll make them static because we're just trying to test out um, just this idea. Let's go, quote text. YouTube is a great place. Learn .com and the wonders of creation. Excellent. Let's press OK, even though this is not finished, render sample image. And we can either click on the, uh, the play button or press Command Enter. Okay, once it's finished, uh, we get the happy little bubble up here with a one in it. Um, we look inside, there's one output bundle and we have URLs, if I sort of select the whole thing, go into a new tab and paste it. And there we have, we have rendered our uh, square 180 by 180, uh, sorry, 1080 by 1080 uh, image. Uh, and we over, we changed one of the uh, pieces of text that was in the, the, the template. Um, remember uh, previously, this was the, this was the piece we changed with text quote. So it was called text quote. And in our uh, we use text quote dot text because there are other attributes of text quote, font size, other things we could have changed as well. But the primary thing we wanted to change was the text. So hopefully you're seeing, you're seeing the magic now of what we are going to be able to do. We are now going to be able to change everything here. I don't want any of it, really. Is it going to be easy to delete everything? Probably not. How about we delete it over here? That's much easier. But, uh, excellent. All right. All right, let's start from scratch. I need uh, my background image. 
static picture. Lovely. Just make that fit the whole a pretty good background picture. I don't know why we might be bothered with our own. That's so excellent. What's the chance this is just going to work? Why did my image not work? Background image. Let's 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 hope for. Uh, It didn't work as well as we would have liked. Oh, I see. Get rid of that. With that. There we go. We're in business. So I had to delete the URL that was already there um, and upload my own. That uploaded it to, to API template servers, and now we have a new URL. Uh, it also figured out that it was 1080 by 1080, which happens to be the same size as our image. We are in business. Um, I'll rename that background image. Uh, we'll never want to change that probably, but uh, nonetheless, um, you could. I mean, if you had the different background images coming through your pipeline, you could put in a different background image or whatever it is you're doing. Um, we now need some, uh, some people's names what makes for a good i need i need uh, i need a compressed font um so that we can uh because you know there might be multiple names and we might do so much with font size so uh narrow font might be a good idea let's not spend too much time general Call it team one names. Now, team one names has to fit into this box. Font, can we do? Da, da, da. So many options for fonts. Centered, oh, that just changed. There it is. I want. Where is my font size? Da -da -da, so many options. It's embarrassing. I'm sure you're seeing it and I'm not seeing it. Here we go. Now, what that? Oh, I see. I did. I did orange and X. Actually, want it to be start on the right. Um, uh, so that should format that to be centered. Um, change my name, I'll go back to 400. Let's put in some example text uh, Dr. Nick and Mool. Make that one team. Um, and then we want another one of those. What's the chance I can duplicate? Here we go. Two. Uh, that is team who names. Uh, Craig and uh, so Derek. Uh, whilst our tennis group has many people from many uh, different countries, they all luckily have very short names. Um, so this is looking good now, uh, except for, I probably want these to be white. Look at that spectacular. Now we'll keep cloning because these fonts are, well, oh, well, I won't say these fonts are great. It just happened to be the fonts that we've got. So we will, uh, clone that again for the score. Six, we should uh, optimistically 
indicate what we think the score will be. And we'll just place that, we'll center it, uh, we'll give it some boundaries of where it should be. And um, team one, set one. On that again. Team one, set two. And clone that a third time. Team one, set three. The solid score line. Well done, Amul. Um, all right, so not sure. Uh, not sure what I've done. This one. Lost track of these. That's that one. So team two, set two. Duplicate. Set one. Finally, team two, set three. Excellent. And you can imagine all this other text could be uh, changeable as well. I've put it into the, uh, the background image, um, but uh, that could all be changed. This is fantastic. Save. We go to our preview. Uh, you can see that either I could pass this entire chunk, um, or uh, there here are all the different um, properties that we could pass. Um, and you can see that the name is the primary one we want. Probably don't need to change that color programmatically. Font size, maybe, maybe there's a reason, but we'd wait to testing for that. Um, you could even change the location of where these things, everything could be changed. But for what we've got, really all we need to do is change the names of the seven, eight, the eight different panels. So let's go back to here. We have these eight that we need to change. Um, so once again, we'll go Dr. Nick is going to play against. Now, so now we just need to, uh, to flesh out each of these. Team two. Um, uh, versus a mool. Um, and then we want some scores. Team one, set one, copy that, uh, six. Team one, team two, set one, text. And uh, let's do one other one, even though, well, actually, we do need all of them, don't we? Set two. Let's just leave them blank. We want to make sure the blank is perfectly fine. Set two, set two. Dun, 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 dun. Set three. And set three. All right, so there are our eight inputs. Um, yes, these will come from earlier on. Um, Right now, we're going to have them as static just to make sure this works. Let's uh, run this and generate our image. Now, this uh, process takes some time and costs some money, whether it's the free tokens. But nonetheless, I want to give it a bit of a look. Um, okay, so it got this right and it got this right, but it has uh, not. Uh, these did not become empty, and empty is what I want. Um, how did I do empty in our original one? I uh, zero. Okay, so I used a uh, double. So basically, an empty a double quote. Okay. Six four. Uh, let's 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 give him the benefit of the doubt to let him think that he won one, and we'll put in a double quote. I don't think I've got that right. Double quote here. This is exciting. We should have some wedding music. And that has not come out spectacularly. Dun, dun, dun. 
over here, I did double quotes. What else are we missing? Never score. Mm -mm -mm. Well, let's 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 pause on that. Maybe this all sorts itself out later on. Um. All right. So we have our ability to uh, render an image, which is fantastic. Now let's go and make our, our Telegram bot process the text, send the text off. Um. And uh, so over here, we want to add a Telegram bot that will listen for all messages. Um, receive, watch, watch for updates, what we want. Um, now, when we create a Telegram bot, uh, we've got our YouTube Ennis bot. Um, we need to, uh, we need a token. And that token goes with the bot that we're going to create. So create a Telegram bot. And, and one of the reasons I like Telegram or playing with, uh, with sorts of chat bots and is just how quickly it is to make a new one. Um, all right, so all we have to do is go to the bot father. You find him in the list. Uh, he is basically, you can create new bots in Telegram using Telegram. I think that's fantastic. You type a new bot. Um, we'll call it, I've, typed, I've copy and pasted, YouTube text bot. Um, Oddly enough, it should be excellent. And this token here is the token we want. I just clicked on it and it went into the clipboard. And so over here, you copy that token in. And we are good to go. Excellent. And, and, and that's all wired up. So now Make has is receiving webhooks, has registered the webhook with a Telegram server so that we'll get those. And so uh, if we, we need to move this, this is kind of like this icon represents where in our scenario, scenario starts. So just because I've physically put this to the left doesn't mean it's first. It's this icon here. We need to move this across. And you saw that it changed from a clock which I had never noticed the seconds ticking before. That's very cute. Um, it's even the right time. Look at that. Um, uh, to this lightning bolt. And lightning bolt means that it uh, is triggered based on an external event, a webhook of sorts. Um, if you're wondering, there are actually other concepts. Um, you can have it on different schedules. Uh, you can even have it on demand, uh, which allows you to trigger it by, uh, there is a make module or triggering other scenarios. Certainly something I've been using. Okay, so this is going to stand here. We will run this. Uh, there is nothing in the queue. We haven't started anything. Uh, we haven't used this bot. So if we visit our bot and click start, that message, that slash start message, actually is a message and it gets sent through um, as the first message. Uh, this is the chat. This is who's chatting to my bot. Um, and it was bot command, and it was slash text. Okay, sorry, that, uh, that's a super small font. Um, so I'll bump that up. What we want to pass through is things like Dr. Nick, the Charlie, six nil. That's what we want to pass through. So if we start that again, press that, we now got this message. The message is a certain chat number, which we're going to use that chat number to send a message back later on. And uh, the message here is, is what we want to use. Convert that text into an image. Um, the next, uh, we want to send this to uh, an AI. You could use uh, ChatGPT, uh, one of its models, um, Brock. Uh, I was using uh, Claude when I first built this. Uh, this is good. Uh, they've now added Claude three and a half um, Sonnet to the list, so you don't have to type that in manually. If they ever come out with a new model and it's not yet in the model, you can click on Map and then type in uh, whatever the new model 
chain is. But luckily uh, for today, that's actually the new one is in here and we'll be using that. Max, max tokens is number coming out. Look, we're, we're going to have a small bit of JSON, but there really won't be many, say 500. Um, and now we have uh, to tell our chat what we want to do. Um, so the input is going to come in, which is going to come from here. But so what? How do we tell the AI what its job is um, and what a good output looks like? The way we do that is with uh, partly with the system prompt and partly we can do it with some additional messages that sort of look like a previous set of messages in the conversation to give it a clue that like this was a happy series and now we're going to do the last message. Um, to help us, I've actually put a few things in uh, GitHub just find this a little easier to read than uh, reading from to make. So this is a system prompt that I've been using uh, in our own box that I'm using tonight. Um, you are very clever at extracting tennis scores from a summary of a match. You will extract the player or players uh, for each team. If a doubles match, format the team name like this. If it's singles, then it's just a name. You extract the set scores. There might be one, two, or three sets into separate variables. You will turn JSON uh, with the required key action um, scorecard. Now, when I was building this, what I discovered was you, you could get messages that didn't actually have scores, and then the, the make thing would break. So I wanted the AI to give us the best chance to sort of tell us, is this a scorecard or can we just ignore it? And so I have a key in there for that. If the message uh, does not contain a score, do not generate the JSON above, instead generate JSON uh, action nothing, which is actually slightly already covered here. So this is our, the system prompt we're going to be using. Now, so far we haven't actually described what success looks like, um, but we'll, we'll do that with some, uh, some other messages. So I'm going to copy that in here and paste that into the system prompt. And the retentiveness means that I need to put those spaces in. Okay, that's the system prompt. And now we're going to put in some sort of uh, example messages of what uh, the conversation might have looked like before. So let's have a look at um, what have I got? I had some examples. The score was Bob and Charlie lost to Nick. Uh, so that's got a team of people beating a single person and then the score line. Um, so they lost. And so let's put that in there. And uh, in this imaginary world, all right, no, no, no. The one content, so we've got the user uh, posted one piece of content. Then the AI, here me, elaborate. Then the AI assistant in this, you know, we're trying to train it how to behave. Um, we want it to have returned this particular example. Oh my God, that's disappointing that that doesn't format nicely. See what we'll do. Let's edit really like this. Let's try copying and pasting from here. Yes, that's much better. Don't know. I don't know why make this text box destroys formatting when it comes from certain places. Um, but here is an example of what we would have expected this text to get turned into. And this is just a, a, a pro tip on how to get LLMs to learn schema. There are other ways uh, you can actually give it the schema and say, but that is outside the scope of what we're looking here. This seems to work pretty well, giving it some examples. We wanted it to have that action key, which I'm going to use later in the scenario to sort of route what to do. I said I wanted uh, first uh, teams to be uh, put with a slash, single people to there, and then the scorecard. Uh, that matches up the people. We had some other examples of the user and then the AI. Oh, yes, that's right. All right, all right, right. So users can send different types of content. Apparently the AI cannot. Um, another one was this piece of text.
and this was an example. So in this case, we had teams, so we had a doubles match uh, with only one set score. Um, we'll add another message, the user, you know, how much do you need to put in? That comes down to the feedback, you know, you, you learn. So this is a message that doesn't include, it includes the word score, but doesn't actually include a score. It's just some people talking. Assistant replies, just action, nothing. Because that's what we told it in the system prompt. Because then we can route differently. All right, so that's, we've now, this is, I hesitate to use the word training uh, because the word training means something very specific in the world of AI, but we are coaxing, coaxing our AI into behaving the way that will make us happy. We're taking unstructured input. We want to turn it into very structured, very specific output that works for what we want to use it for. Finally, we want to pass our Telegram message in. Text. And finally, we will pass in the text coming from the chatbot. And we are, uh, we're, we're going along strong at this point. Um, so we will extract score into JSON. Oops. Let's make a little bit of space. Um, and let's run this, see what happens. Set that off, and what do we get? This looks great. Extracted the names, um, it assigned the scores correctly. Oh, let's do one more test. Let's say uh, lost to Charlie. Let's see if it uh, correctly reassigns the scores because this is, I think, one of the, the parts of, of using these large language models is they know tennis. So in this case, the scores should be flipped around. And indeed, um, it actually reassigned the scores, uh, reassigned the scores, and uh, because six love is a winning score, and I said that Dr. Nick lost to Charlie, it gave the six score to Charlie. Absolutely fantastic. Um, so there's a lot to be, you know, there's a lot of free wins we get here uh, in the large language models of uh, 2024. Um, heck, in 2025, uh, you might not need any of this and it might just spit out images for us, but uh, here we are today building this because they don't. Now, uh, so far, we have only seen uh, correct valid JSON coming out. Um, when I was building this, uh, it would sometimes spit out additional text at the front. It would say, by the way, here's your JSON. Uh, and I found that irritating because that was not correct JSON. So um, I will um, text parser. You know what, I won't because, you know, you, you'll find it yourself if it happens when it ha when when the error happens we will uh we'll add it so far we've seen only valid json so let's let's uh now turn that text json into an object that we can use inside make so we're going to wire the as json module back up to the output of our uh, large language model which is this field here Run this one more time. Let's stop using that one. I don't didn't like the score of that one. And now let's see. Uh, so now we get a bundle. Instead of a, a block of text, we now have an object inside of make that we can use um, here. And finally, we can wire this up. This is pretty exciting. So now we can uh, take that. Wire that up to there, take that, delete it, wire that up to there, take that, wire it up to there, take that, 
interesting that they had no zero there. Um, da -da 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 -da. Da -da 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 -da. Set three and set three. Okay, so we have now mapped manually that JSON to our uh, structure. If, if, by the way, if you were looking at using the uh, dynamic payload, you would need to get the AI to produce this as the text string coming out, not, uh, not just that. You would need the full dot text because that's what um, a, a, a API template is expecting. So I've given um, the AI a simple job of producing nice JSON, and then we'll just manually wire them up together. Okay, we will run this through one time to see if this works. Uh, Dr. Nick and YouTube uh, beat make um, six, seven, five, um, four, six. It's not even valid. It just, you know, if we're going to win, we would win in the third set. And I didn't run it, uh, so that's a mistake. So now if I press run, this again. I'm off to enter. Let's just check the output. Dr. Nick and YouTube beat make, and those scores look correct. Take our URL. And there we have our image for the first time. How cool is that? How cool? This is so cool. So the last job on the successful path is to now send this picture back to Telegram. And I say successful path because so far we haven't actually encountered any errors to watch for. And errors are annoying in Make because if you don't handle errors, uh, make.com will just shut your scenario down, send you an email and move on with this life until you fix it. Um, which can be embarrassing when you're trying to demonstrate your bot to your friends and they keep finding ways to break it. So we will come back to errors in a second. They suck. Uh, we now need to send a text. We're going to send it to our tennis bot. Uh, we want to send it back to the same chat that it came from. Uh, the chat ID is in the original message. Undo message.chat.id. We don't want to send any text per se, so it does want us to. So maybe we've picked the wrong. We've picked the wrong one. Telegram image. Send a document or image. That sounds like the one we want. Back to message, message, chat, ID. Um, caption. We could, you know, if, if, if the AI had given us some sort of summary, um, we could have trained it to give us a summary of what the score was. Uh, we could have put that in there. Since we're activating this by someone typing something, it's not that important. You know, someone will type the score and we'll give an image, a caption, not so relevant in this situation. Send by data. Uh, we're actually going to send it by the URL that came out from the previous step, which is this URL here. Pause mode. Don't need to worry about that. And don't really have an opinion about notifications. Rename. Send image. Telegram. Let's go through this one more time. Uh, we have watch for any message. Watch for any message. Uh, at the moment, we're assuming all messages have a score in them. Um, we will give that to the AI to turn it into a structured text. We'll pass that text into a make a bundle. I will send that bundle off to API template and we'll get an image as a URL and we'll send that back to Telegram. Let's find out if this works.
Bomb. Here we go. It's rendering. A URL has been produced. We've given that URL to Telegram. Telegram has now sent that to us. And there is our image. Um, now, another option for sending is to put the URL as a, um, just as, as a text message. So let's unlink that for the moment. I think I actually did this. Uh, message, chat, text. So if we go down to ours mode, we say markdown. Um, if we do a or then where is our URL? This final, so it's like the text. This would be like a link. Uh, this is a markdown syntax for a link. Uh, the other option we could have used is HTML, in which case um, we could use a href equals final score. Either of those is going to work just fine. So now instead of um, sending the Telegram group a picture, we're sending it a link, and we're using hopefully the benefit. Um, uh, the feature of Telegram that will look at the link and render it, see if that looks any better. And scorecard or URL. Let's run this again. Waiting for the message to be received. So the message at the moment stuck somewhere between Telegram server not having sent it or it having been sent to, tell, to uh, make, but make not having given it to our scenario. That failed. It was unauthorized. Ah, I've sent it to the wrong, sent it to the wrong bot. Let's just pretend for a second rather than render it again. And we will run this module only. So, if you send, if you upload the image, uh, if you post an image, it looks like this. And if you post a URL that is an image, it looks like this. And I'll let you decide which one you like the best. I certainly like the big one. Um, so I will stick with this one. Um, and uh, this is what we will use from now on. So I'm going to get rid of this one. Keep this one. Um, and uh, so fundamentally, it, this is working in inverted quotes. There are some things that we now need to handle errors. There are going to be errors, and I will demonstrate some of them for you. Um, uh, what if someone says, uh, so there's a group of us. Some of us were there. Some of us weren't there. Um, yeah, but we should have one. This is one. Someone else should have sent that. Oops, I didn't. Uh, it run our so if someone posts that message uh, it gets received eventually uh, and it got sent off to the AI and now it's going to try to render an image of what what it was that had nothing to do with image rendering what is it even going to figure out you know I don't even know what what it decided to post there Oh, um, not even sure where that came from. So, um, so what we might do is uh, filter and stop. So we, we, we're, we're going to receive every message sent to this group and that will use up one op, but we can sort of at least have a quick filter um, scores only so that 
all we care about is things that have certain keywords in them. Um, so in this case, we use the word beat. So it contains a beat. Uh, or we could have the message contains the word score uh, or scores. Um, or we could say it has the word um, uh, one. You know, you, you can have it a different trigger. In fact, just to keep this simple, we'll just look for the word score. So our text has to have the word score in it in order to trigger our AI. That's in, to, in terms of triggering our flow. We'll always run the first one, uh, but then we'll stop anything else going through. Let's run this. Um, yes, but we should have won. Oops. Go away. Okay, that ran. Oh, sorry, it's still running. We're videoing in the middle of a slow moment in the world of Telegram and Facebook.com. And it stopped here. So you can see that the process, the message got here, but it did not make it through the filter. That's what that's trying to tell us, that it did not make it through the filter. Um, now, another thing that might happen is that uh, what comes out here might not be JSON. In this case, this will error and just blow up the scenario and make or send you an email complaint. We can at least handle the error to say, um, just ignore it. Look, or, you know, actually I tell you what, we don't want to just ignore it uh, because maybe there's something coming out that we could fix from the AI. So we'll say uh, break, um, just need one attempt, three attempts, and we'll put that up here somewhere. Um, because we, we want to know about that, um, that, that the error happened. Now, this little red thing means there's something wrong. Um, first on top of it, this directive requires storing complete executions. What that means is you click down here on the cog and scroll down and we need to change this to yes. Unsure exactly why, why this is optional. I guess it's because you have space limits. Who knows how much space it uses. Um, other things that might error, of course, is uh, any API call that heads out to the outside world might fail. So let's um, really need to wait. I don't want that to, to do its thing. Um, and uh, if the reply. Uh, Yep, but we'll give that a couple of goes as well. Um, and of course, uh, we are sending messages off to the AI and they might fail as well. Oops. Uh, and we'll learn. We'll learn whether or not why we, we got errors. But the gist of here is that um, we should now have a nice uh, process that should flow through nicely. Um, we can now uh, save that. Oops, did that. YouTube tennis bot. Um, scoring bot, really. Uh, schedule that to be on so that the bot works. Uh, we'll save that and export that blueprint. So in summary, we have uh, made an incredible uh, Telegram bot. Could have been anything. It could have been from Slack. It could have been uh, from a text message. However it is you wish the inputs to come in. Um, we used natural language to pull out structured text. And then we uh, sent it off to API, tele uh, API template to turn it into an image. Um, that flow, that's going to be huge in your life. This is going to be a wonderful thing for your work and for social life. Things you can make are going to impress a lot of people uh, and be super useful. 
so I hope you've really enjoyed the video. Uh, I look forward to seeing you in the next one and uh, have a great day.